cancelled. Sweezy. So it's time for more Schwoke movie reviews, where I watch movies that uh, were made slash released before 2010. <laughs> Jeez, the seltzers just give you the burps. Go through movies that I've watched before 2010, and I come back at them with a new lens. A lens that you probably didn't think of when you watched the movie, uh, because you're not insane like me, and that's what makes it good. So uh, this week, I decided to watch Ratatouille, a Pixar film. Um, it's a weird when you have a, a film, you know, like from Pixar, which are notoriously known for making great movies. And uh, I really thought about this because this week I did think about the people talking about the Ratatouille musical that was going on and people submitting stuff. And I know they already did all that shit, but I was like, hmm, maybe I could write something and like, maybe I'll watch the movie, get some inspiration. Did write a song. Uh, I'm not going to air it this week because songs take a while to get done. And, uh, I'm just one man. I can only do so much for you folks. So, um, it, it, it is, I kind of like the song, but, uh, one day you may hear it. It's not, doesn't sound like music I actually make. It's very, uh, singer song musical piano y type stuff so it's a little new to me but uh no it's cool so that's the reason kind of i wanted to watch it kind of see if i have inspiration maybe i could like write a song maybe get added uh to the musicale so um so let's just kind of like go through the movie and like i'll go through my thoughts as i'm watching the movie uh because i had a lot of them i'm not gonna lie i did have a lot of thoughts uh, 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 so this is what you came here for, me burping and talking about cartoons. So, uh, like, the movie starts out with this rat, Remy, um, played by Patton Oswald, who you forget is in the movie because, I, for some, I don't know. Okay, I'm going to stop burping soon. Okay. Uh, he has, like, a strong food palate for some reason, while the other rats don't, because typically rats just eat garbage and they're like, oh, we're good, we're, we're fine, we're, we're great, but not Remy. Remy is an unusually different rat. So, uh, so basically, uh, his whole cohort and family, they either live outside, I don't know, I think they live in the attic of the place, and they kind of, like, sneak down, get some garbage. I don't, I couldn't remember that part, um, but I don't remember. But anyways, well, no, they, I think they did live in the attic because of later points. So Remy's always like trying to go down to the kitchen, get like special ingredients. Like maybe we could cook this and shit like that. And he's like, Remy, if that woman's <laughs> like his brother's like, Remy, if that woman sues you, she'll kill you. Uh, but anyways, like he's like, oh, I'm going on you all the time. I know what's going on. Uh, but Remy's actually, but like the family, everyone loves Remy because he checks everything for poison with his very nice palate. So, um, Basically, like, they're going down, like, trying to do some cooking shit and everything like that, and uh, they get to, like, the kitchen and, like, look at the TV, and then there's uh, Gusto is a character, is a humongously fat chef, and um, no shame to anyone who is overweight and cooks really good. If I don't trust skinny chefs. I don't trust Gordon Ramsay. He's too skinny and in shape. There's some chefs out there who at one point were kind of fat. And then they just, like, di knew how to diet and get down. So, like, you can trust them, but Gordon Ramsay, there's no way he's... With how, how in shape he is. Like, if you're in shape, you're not a good cook. Just saying. I'm just saying. Like, you don't at me on that. Uh, but no, he's watching the cooking program, but then they announce he's dead. And then Rummy's like, he's dead? And to the human woman, is like, wink, wink, squeaks and shit like that. Then she wakes up, uh, pulls out a gun, and tries to just shoot them throughout her own home and she's shooting so much in her home uh that she with so many holes in the ceiling uh the ceiling collapses with remy's entire family uh how do you not know 50 million rats are living in your attic um you would hear that i would assume uh, i would assume you hear multiple little footprints i live on like the on a top floor apartment and, um, one time they did work on the roof on a Friday, the day I record this show. And they like, there's na you could see nails like damage that they've done, like how shitty of a job they did. And like, I noticed that. And, um, if I could notice that I could definitely 
hear a bunch of little footprints. You know, like even if you live on a bottom floor apartment, you hear your neighbors. Like it's not old news. So be who you want to be, folks. Okay. Um, but yeah, and she shoots up the kitchen. Like she just shoots up her entire house. She shoots up her entire house. I would never, if I see a rat, I'm getting like a physical weapon. I'm not getting a gun. Like I'll get like a baseball bat, a golf club, and just start beating the shit out of it. Less damage that way. Um, but still, the main point is you want to get the rat out of the house and then make sure there's no way for the rat to get back in the house. That's the point. You don't use a gun, folks. So if you have a rat in your house, all I can say is um, don't use a gun, idiot. Re- you Republican idiot. Which actually works with the R word theory. Um, but yeah, no. So basically, I'm like their escape out of the old woman's house. They get on a river and Remy gets lost from his tribe. Uh but then the ghost of Gusteau decides to lead Remy to his restaurant for some reason. Um, and once we get to the restaurant there, we meet Linguini. Um, is, it, is this movie based in Italy? No, it is based in France. And his name is Linguini. And he should be a good cook because his name sounds like pasta. But is he a good cook? No. Um, but he needs a job. And uh, Skinner, uh, the small, tiny uh, head chef, uh, lets him on as a garbage boy because apparently they needed one. So uh, good luck there. And it's amazing how everyone in Paris uh, speaks perfect English with just the slightest Italian accent. No, slightest French accent. And uh, it's great. I think they probably took the same course Thanos took when he invaded Earth in Infinity War and uh, Endgame. I like to assume it's like Muzzy, and if you don't know who Muzzy is, he might be too young to be listening to this program. Um, But nevertheless, I will allow you to keep going, because I have a lot more important things to say to save your soul. Uh, But, so yeah, we meet Linguini, uh, and he should be a good cook, because he sounds like his name is Pasta. Um... So, like, Remy, uh, with no self-control, mainly because he's a rat and probably is pretty fucking stupid, uh, just starts cooking in the kitchen, like, helping off the soup, like, adding all these ingredients to the soup, uh, but then he gets caught by Linguini, and Linguini, like, hides Remy in the kitchen, and then, like, uh, everyone's like, you are messing with the fucking soup? What the fuck are you doing right now? So, uh, you know, he's, you know, going back in there and they're like, well, let's feed the soup to the guest who wants the soup. And then they send the soup out that Remy made to the lady. And, uh, turns out that was a food critic. And so, uh, and she really liked it. So good things happening, uh, for Linguini because he gets blamed for it. And, uh, basically shit like that. But, uh, then, so Remy sees that he can cook, but then like they catch the rat and they're like, we gotta get rid of it. And then they catch it in a jar and they're like, Remy, go and kill this fucking thing. And so they go out. They go out and like he tries to kill him. But then he's like, you understand me? And Remy's like, yeah, because I can. He, and he can read too. I don't know how he learned how to read. Um, but then he like he's reading like understanding. And he's like, you know what? Maybe you can help me and uh, I won't kill you. And then Remy's like, oh, OK. And then Remy like initially runs away. But then he's like, you know what? Maybe I will go back and cook for him uh so then they team up uh but not without trust issues there's trust issues throughout the entire film uh so basically uh they're like hmm we gotta figure out like a hiding spot to like figure out where you can go and that way you can help me cook these things because now uh linguini is one of the bang chefs in the restaurant so then uh so he's taking out like hiding spots and he actually considers putting a rat in his pants next to his peener and his ball sack. Now, I don't know about you, but the last place I would ever want to find a rat on me is in my nuts. Uh, because rats have bitey teeth and he eventually they do. He does biting all over the place on Remy, uh, on no, Linguini. Um, so, but the, the idea that he actually hesitated for a second in to putting a rat, a wild rat that can read and understand humans, the, the idea he even considers this 
is mind blowing to me. Like there was a pause with the nuts, like putting it in the nuts. There was a pause in the movie, folks. Go on, go on your Disney Plus. Like you know, if you're listening to the show, you have Disney Plus. You don't pay for a lot of people and OnlyFans. Um, that's all I got to say there. Like, do not. Yeah, he considers it for a second. I just cannot believe it. Well, then also, then after that, you know, hijinks ensue. He's like, put him in here. And he's like, Remy's like, I gotta smell it. But he can't speak English. And then, like, they put it up there and it doesn't work. And then hijinks ensue until they figure out that, uh, for some fucking reason, um, Remy can be controlled by his hair. Like, when he pulls on one end, he's like, oh. Uh, and then he pulls on another, he's like, oh. Uh, and then, like, they figure out how to walk around and he's like, oh. Uh, Smell my hat. And that was another thing. Like, no one thought that was suspicious. Like, hmm, is this ingredient good? Huh? Maybe, uh, on top of my head? No, it's not. <laughs> like, I don't know. Anyone didn't think that was fucking weird. Hmm. If I hold it up here, maybe it'll make a lot of sense. Like, that would make a lot of sense, folks, if I just let my hair smell it. They do that. So they figure out that, and then they go in the hijinks, you know, figuring out how to move him which is weird i don't know i don't think that's realistic at all um there's has to be some scientist out there uh who knows that's not accurate and pixar should have uh consulted anyone to tell you that probably doesn't work um anyways no so uh oh yeah and then they meet then he has to like properly create the suit which he gets right then he meets colette who goes on a long rant about how she's the only female chef because it's hard for women to make it in the cooking industry which is very, which is something we're going actually woke for a moment because it might have been just like a blind spot for me, but, uh, I didn't know, like cooking was sexist, like, I guess. And I, I, I told some female friends, females, uh, about it. And they were like, yeah, so women cook mainly for women things, but men cook for money. I'm like, oh, okay. Well, that makes that makes sense. So, y'all don't be sexist about people cooking. Women can cook too. <laughs> I know, I know, y'all didn't know that, but women can cook too. So, um, these are straight facts coming to you right now uh, from me. Uh, important news bulletin: Women can cook. I bet you didn't know that, but they do, and they're just as good as men. Uh, I'm pretty sure if we're going top chefs of all time, um, I'm probably sure it's 50, 50 men and women. I can't imagine it's like more men than women in that situation. It has to, I, I have to think it's 50, 50 and the best cooks of all time. Um, but that's a rant, uh, for someone else, because I don't know if I'm qualified for that. It's like maybe a rant for Guy Fieri or one of Guy Fieri's friends. Uh, that's the only chef I respect is Guy Fieri and Guy Fieri's friends. So, um, Okay, so then, um, so then there's a twist in the movie. Turns out, uh, Linguini is Gusto's secret son. Now, I bet you're all shocked here because uh, Gusto was morbidly obese, and I'm assuming that was the cause of his death. I can't imagine it's not. And um, I, if he was probably recreated and one of the fat people in Wally. Um, we're just going to make an assumption there that, that he was in Wally too. Um, and, but it was recreated. Uh, he was cloned uh, because they all needed something from him. Um, but then we find out it's Gusto's secret son, um, which I didn't realize he was clapping cheeks. Imagine Gusto. Look up a picture of Gusto uh, from Ratatouille and imagine him clapping cheeks. I don't. Because it looks, it would more likely, it wouldn't be gross to me, it would be sad. Um, imagining him cooking, uh, clapping cheeks. Uh, but Chef Skinner's upset, uh, because, uh, somehow in his will, uh, the, the main, the next chef in his restaurant received all his money, not the, uh, not any relative of his, um, and then you went, and that's for me when I realized that Skinner's not small, uh, because of any genetic problems, he's small because he's a little bitch, and he is our main antagonist of this story. As we have learned, he is short because he's a bitch. So sometimes, uh, most of the time, when someone has a genetic problem or a disability, it's because they're uh, because just you know life 
takes its toll on everyone. Uh, but sometimes it's because you're a bitch. And remember, like I said, that for uh, Burgermeister Meister Burger, that's why he's in a wheelchair. And for, uh, oh yeah, a Mr. Potter from It's a Wonderful Life, uh, he's in a wheelchair because he's a bitch. And uh, Skinner is short because he's a bitch. Sometimes God does the right thing. And jot that down. Uh, it's in the Bible. I always know, I you can always say that, and it usually works. But uh, li- Skinner is small. Cause he's a bitch. And then, uh, so, um, and then, so, okay. Yeah. And then Skinner starts getting really like suspicious of rent of, uh, over Remy. He thinks he keeps seeing the rat. He thinks, which he probably, which he is. And he's like going crazy about it. So he takes Linguini into his office and starts getting him real drunk to try to get him to confess. Now this was all before the me too movement. Um, I would have assumed that he would have tried to have sex with him. If I didn't already know, this was a children's film. But um, if this was real life, folks, in real life, if your boss asks you to come to your office and drinks a lot with you, uh, and I'm speaking to the women here, uh, I'm assuming you would probably already know this, but if your boss wants you to come to his office and uh, gets you drunk, um, just say no to that because sounds like something bad's going to happen. Uh this is why kids movies has ruined our lives. I was like, oh, I'll try. Trust my boss. He won't rate me if he gives me an entire bottle of wine. So, uh, nevertheless, uh, he doesn't confess because, uh, Linguini is a ride or die. And also that's his job. So he doesn't need a reason to get fired. Um, so it doesn't work, but Remy is outside just like eating his food. And then, uh, he reunites with his brother and his family, and, uh, you know, they kind of do a kerfuffle because Remy's like, I'm going to live with Linguini, but it's nice knowing you. I'm going to come and visit all the time like a normal people work, but that's not how rats work because rats are not human, and uh, this is a cartoon. So um, so they get into an argument like, we got to stick together because we have to build our tribe and stay alive together. And then he takes him to the, the dead rat shop where there's just like a bunch of dead rats hanging on the wall. No one's eating rats. Like, are you selling dead rats? How is that a business? Is it, uh, it's France. I'm sorry, I forgot. It's France. France would sell dead rats to people. It's like, here's your rats. But it's also a rat poison store. Uh, we got the dead rats and then we got the rat poison uh, for you. Uh, take it all. Whatever you want, it's on. We'll help you out. We're just trying to make a sale. A business is struggling right now because no one wants to buy dead rats. Um, but we get a couple get a couple customers in for the uh, rat poison, which is actually useful, but no one for the dead rats. So um, I don't get this store. I don't get this store at all. It's just a bunch of dead rats hanging on a wall. Like, Come and buy your dead rats. It doesn't ha- it has a smell eventually, though. Right? Like, like with like beef and stuff like that, they like do some shit to it where it's like, uh, they cut it and shit. Like they skin it. I, I don't know. I don't hang out with dead animals. I just cook them and eat them. Uh, but no, like what? I don't understand this fucking dead rat store. It makes no sense to me besides the rat poison. And also like, why are you having a store specifically for rat poison? Like that's such a niche market. Like, I obviously, like, a bike store or a guitar store makes sense. I mean, mainly, you sell, like, at a bike store, you sell bikes. And you probably sell wheels and shit like that based on it. But with the rat, po- rat stores, like, we sell dead rats and rat poison. That's all we sell. That's all we sell. It's such a niche market. And that's a problem I have with France. Uh, but I also don't know a lot about France. So um, I should probably research France before I start talking any more shit about him. But uh, nevertheless, Remy still believes in humanity and uh, uh, goes back to Linguini to help him. Uh, So he finds, oh yeah, no. So Skinner was like, oh, I need you to clean the entire fucking kitchen. Uh, Even though I just got you drunk, really drunk. And Linguini's like, fuck you, but fine. Fuck you and I'll see you tomorrow. (laughs) Uh, so he's, he passed out halfway through cleaning like anyone would after getting severely drunk and passing out. But then Remy finds him and is like, I'll, I'll help him get up and get his shit going. Uh, turns out, uh, Remy can reanimate Linguini when he 
when he's passed out, when he's passed, when like when he's not moving and uh, has, has this whole kerfuffle argument with Colette because he's not conscious and she's getting mad at him and uh, which leads to an argument and they go outside and Linguini is about to uh, like reveal Remy to her. But when he pulls up the hat, he reanimates Remy, uh, Linguini to move forward and then they kiss, obviously. Normal movie fashion, obviously. Love interest. We found the love interest, folks. Um, we did it. We found a love interest. And uh, it's better than ever, folks. The one chick in the restaurant. Who knew? The one woman in this movie is the love... Well, besides the grandma who shot up her own home, who turns out the the only other woman in this movie was the love interest. And... But Remy does not want women. He He only loves cooking food so and i guess uh remy okay then remy like remy his family his brother and his friends are like wanting food so remy's like fuck fine i'll like go into uh to get the food but the the refrigerator type place is closed so he sneaks in the skinner's office where he discovers uh where that linguini is uh the heir to gusto's restaurant um but Obviously, Skinner walks in, they have a little fight, and he runs away, and he gets away, and gets it to Linguini, and Linguini finds out, becomes the owner of the restaurant, and uh, Skinner gets fired, and uh, in his unemployment, uh, instead of just finding a new job, what Skinner decides to do is uh, stalk Linguini, because um, now he has no job, so he has a lot of free time, and in his free time, he wants to let, uh, he wants to figure out uh, what Linguini's relationship to this rat is, which is adorable uh, for a little man uh, who is also a bitch, which is the reason why he's little, if you didn't know. Uh, like, he, uh, he even calls a health inspector saying there's a rat in the restaurant. He's like, well, we'll come in three months, which is also a weird thing as we come up to later. So, but then we get to the final act of this movie. Uh, Linguini and Remy get into, like, a little fight, uh, uh, when he's like on like getting interviewed for the TV and he's like, my inspiration is Colette. And he's like, I'm not going to fucking say a rat is my inspiration. Um, uh, we'll get shut down immediately. And uh, so they get into a fight about that. Um, <coughs> very, very one sided. If I do say so myself. Uh, so Remy's like, oh, I don't need you. He goes away. But then he's like, oh, I actually probably need him. Um, so then like Remy. Then, like, he randomly runs into his family again, like, we want food, come get us some food. He's like, you know what, fuck it, bring the whole tribe. They all come in, sneak into the kitchen, like, are all getting their food. But uh, Linguini comes back to the restaurant, like, wanting to apologize, uh, because he can't do it without him. And uh, then he catches his entire cohort of rats. And he's like, you're still using me, because there's trust issues between a rat and a human. Who would have guessed that two species that don't speak the same language are having problems with trust so but also so so remy's like oh, I'm, I'm done with you and then they they leave uh and then anton ego shows up to the restaurant and he's like uh i heard you guys got better food now and uh i'm being a little bitch right now for some reason uh mainly because he says he doesn't swallow food he doesn't like and uh, he's probably just hungry <laughs> so i'm gonna assume that's the problem with him and so, uh, anyway, so I think Remy is like, I'm still, I still know I need to help him with this ego situation. Uh, ego is the last name of this, this dude, um, who's malnourished. And, uh, so like, oh yeah. And then like Skinner sets up a little trap and traps him and then throws him in the trunk of his car. Um, and ego is there talking to the waiters like, Hmm, I want some wine. How about some perspective? I'm like, the guy's like, what? And he gives this, like, I'll have perspective and uh, you will bring me the food. I'm like, can you just shut the fuck up right now? This is the stupidest fucking conversation I've ever heard in my entire life. And I used to live in Missouri. So uh, that's all I have to say. And then, um, where am I? Where am I at my notes? <laughs> um, Oh, yeah, and so eventually, uh, you know, the ghost of Gusto uh, gives him a little pep talk 
Uh, this is the part where I actually wrote the song for like you still gives him a pep talk. He's like, I'm not a rat. I'm not. I don't. I don't belong with the rats. I don't belong with the humans. What am I? And he's like, You're you. That's the song I wrote for this. If it I ever release it. Uh, but no, he's like, Yeah, that. And then his family breaks him out and uh, gets to the door. So when once Remy's at the door, all the kitchen staff is like, Rat. And then like they're all about to kill the rat. And then Linguini jumps and he's like, Stop it. Everyone, stop it. And he gives this gay little speech about how uh, this rat has been cooking for him all along. And that and then everyone just quits on the spot because they're like, what the fuck is going on right now? And is that what you do in a job? Because I've worked jobs where there's a lot of stupid shit that's going on. And I've stayed because I need the paycheck. Um, but not in this situation, though. No, not in this one. So not that. So. Then, okay, so Remy is, they realize that Remy is, it's just Remy and Linguini. Uh, eventually, Colette returns because she's on a moped and sees a bookstore with Gusteau's book that said anyone can cook. And they're like, you know what, what? fuck it, a rat can cook. And then like, she she goes back because uh, that's the dick she's riding. Um, but then Remy gets his army of rats to help him cook and uh, everything. And Linguini is going to wait tables because that's, the best situation um for that since the wait staff is all gone it's like well let's have the one person who's not cooking um wait tables that's how i think places work um and yeah so the rats are doing all this shit led by remy uh, doing that then the, like the health inspector walks in and when they're like uh, i'll i'm not gonna be able to see that for like three months but then like conveniently the day like he walks in unannounced are health inspectors allowed to just come in unannounced i don't know how restaurants work but then they uh they're like what meal are we gonna make for ego because i guess he didn't decide anything and they're like let's make this dish called ratatouille that's the name of the movie folks we got the name of the movie and so they make ratatouille for him he eats it and he has a flashback to his childhood that's how good it is to like when his life was better um so a malnourished man eats his first meal in forever um and eventually he wants to meet the chef and they have to wait till closing and then they take out the rat show him all, everything that's going on and then he goes like not phased at all a little confused at first but then but not really phased um and then but you know he liked the meal so he was not a dick he gave a good review um but then we get to the end of the movie where um they had to let the health inspector go uh, from the rats tying them up and uh they basically they shut that shit down immediately <laughs> like an army of rats cooking like this can't be this can't be safe and so the movie ends and, but and ego loses all credibility but he likes the food so much uh, because it's the only food he actually will eat and so now he's being nourished and so the movie ends them opening a new restaurant called ratatouille um but I believe everyone at, who goes to the restaurant is okay with the rat cooking. So that's how the movie ends. So, folks, we're, we live in a society, everyone. We are living in a society. And all I can say from this point, um, you know, you know, honestly, I don't even know the fucking... I feel like there's, like, morals to movies. Like, I feel like there's morals... Or, like, meanings to movies. Is the meaning of a movie even a rat can do anything? Or a rat can achieve greatness? <laughs> Is that the moral of this story? Um, I mean, I just finished Wild and Division, but no spoilers. Uh, it's kind of about love and loss. Like, that's kind of the, the idea of grieving. Like, this idea of grieving. Like, the meaning of it. Like, what you do to, you know, grieve someone. I mean... So we get to this point, like, what's the purpose of this story? Like, obviously, I think, like, watching it's good, but then when you critically think about it, um, like, the story makes sense, like, story-wise, like, the story makes sense, but when you think about, like, what's the meaning of this story? Um, rats can cook food sometimes, very occasionally. That's the meaning of this story. And why do we, why do we fall, Master Wayne, uh, to stand back up again, I believe is the quote, um, overall though, you know, I'm still weirded out by a whole woman just shooting up her entire house. Like, that's very stupid. Um, there's an all, another question. Would you, 
let a rat cook you food if he was in, like, the hat of Linguini, you know? Like, because he's not really contacting your food at all. Still in, like, a clean environment. Just a singular rat on someone's head. And also, what, ha- what would happen if Remy had to poop on his head? Did he just let let it go? I gotta poop. Did she just fucking shit in my hair right now? <laughs> but no. Um, I don't know. Maybe I will get that song done for the Ratatouille musical. I haven't necessarily decided I want to yet, but um, we will see. Change is always happening in this world. And uh, everything happens for a reason. But a lot of those reasons are not good reasons. And uh, Pixar decided to make a movie about a rat cooking. And so some days I feel down and then I think about a rat cooking food. And I decide that things aren't always as bad as I think they are. So we have that. So that's my thoughts on Ratatouille, a movie by Pixar starring Patton Oswalt and no one else I know. So, yeah. What's going on, my fellow Schwoke Lord? Hope you enjoyed that highlight from one of the great shows that I make. Uh, if you want to watch more clips or even full episodes, go check them out over here and down below and everywhere else. Uh, stay awesome.